Good morning, folks. This is Ray Bissett. I'm here at the uh, Firm U, a private personal training facility, and I'm here with another success story in progress right here. Have uh, a client who's been with me for how long? About um, going on two and a half months, I think. Two and a half months? Okay. It's Kino. And uh, what were your goals coming in? Yeah, so coming in, um, I was getting ready for uh, my wedding that is coming up in January and so um, was looking to lose weight okay. but also get stronger um, as well and I knew I needed to clean up my eating and so was looking for advice um, on all over health and well-being. Right and you're uh, in jiu-jitsu correct? Yeah so my fiance and I own a jiu-jitsu gym and so what's I'm, the name of it? Haven, Haven Jiu-Jitsu Haven? Academy. I gotta go down that way. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah, Yeah. that's great. And how did you find this location? how did you find me? So I live in this area, okay. but I work in the Galleria area. And okay. so, you know, I kind of reflected back on why my exercise habits were not as successful as um, I would like for them to be. And I had previously tried to work out around my office but truth be told after work i just wanted to get home right so i purposely looked for um, a training facility next to my home right and that was honestly like within a five to ten minute distance so i had zero excuses right exactly okay so um what was your impression when you first walked in what did you think so now you're you're getting married when January last week of January. okay so we got we got some uh, yeah some doing some some oh, things yeah. going on we've been so working we got a date, date. <laughs> yeah so we're date sensitive here so anyway so what uh, what got you in through the door or um, yeah go ahead finish so um, I I actually just found you online okay I was looking at various different trainers personal trainers I have previously done group exercise classes and um, just different group type of fitness things but. You know, again, I, I knew I needed to hold myself accountable. Okay. And I felt like if I had just a one-on-one -on -one personal trainer, um, I would be able to actually kind of hold myself accountable, but I knew that person would also hold me accountable, right? You bet, we're in it's it together. Lot, right, it's a lot harder to um, text an individual person saying, I'm not coming. Right. As opposed to you just not showing up to a 12-person group class where it, they might not even notice that you're gone. Right, or have a knee injury or, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, and so, so that was important for me too because I had an ACL, MCL, meniscus um, tear mm -hmm. all at the same time about two and a half to three years ago. And so um, rehabbing that took a long time, um, but I also needed to make sure that I wasn't putting myself through exercises um, that would make it feel uncomfortable. Right, and that and once you have an injured client, folks, you know, you have a client that's not going to be successful. Yeah. Speaking of success, oh my gosh. Yes. How did you feel <laughs> about getting on the bioimpedance scale at first? Nobody okay. likes to get on a, a thing yeah. called a scale, <laughs> but the bioimpedance actually is a little bit more intelligent that tells us more information. Yeah. How did you feel about that? At first? Yeah. It was very uh, intimidating, Yeah. but I think they were the numbers that I needed to see to keep myself motivated and knowing that I could do better. Right. Yeah. And for those out there that don't know, uh, are familiar with the bioimpedance scale, we measure fat in pounds, we measure muscle in pounds, and also water in pounds. So those who think they lost 10 pounds of something, we can intelligently tell you, or specifically I should say, tell you what you lost. The last thing you wanna do is lose muscle. Most people that lose 10 pounds are gonna lose about two and a half pounds of muscle. Well muscle, or fat, burns in the muscle cell. So it only makes sense to keep your muscle. We want to lose this guy right here, the fat part, the fluffy part that everybody's a little self-confidence or self-aware um, um, of, and it makes your clothes fit tighter. And a lot of times we lose a lot of water by changing up your diet and things like that. But here we know exactly what you lost and how to go about it. Now I've got your results from our mm -hmm. our beginning, and then we um, after the first month we did another test, and then on was it uh, Friday yeah we did another test and bottom line you started on the uh, September 10th mm -hmm. and you had lost 14 pounds okay yeah. so you went from 212 to 198 yeah. um, your body fat percentage went down 2% 
your fat weight. Now this is a big one, folks. This is what we want to do is get rid of the fluffy stuff, okay? And so um, your fat weight went down 10 pounds. That's 10 pounds of fat. Mm -hmm. The rest of it was from water. Mm -hmm. um, and your muscles stayed approximately about the same. When you start losing a little bit of water, you also lose water inside the muscle and also your interstitial tissue here, which gives you, gets rid of that bloatiness. Anyway, so you've done great so far. So 14, down 14 pounds in two months is a very healthy way. And has it been, um, has it really put you out of your lifestyle or, you know, I mean. No, I would say it's really enhanced my lifestyle to be honest. Yep. Um, I, so there are a couple of things that I've noticed in terms of my mentality and just like instinctual um, thought process, I guess. So one thing that you said to me that really resonated with me and I just, it just hit me really deep. And we were talking about nutrition and food. And you said, just focus on eating until you're satisfied. And that word satisfied, for whatever reason, hit me in a different way this time, right? Right. Um, the word full seem, feels really different to me than satisfied. And so I've really just been focusing on eating until I'm satisfied, mm -hmm. recognizing that I can eat again in one hour or two hours if I am feeling hungry again. Right. So don't eat until you're full, eat until you're satisfied. Right. Um, and so I have noticed that naturally I've slowed down my chewing um, just to focus on the actual flavors of the food and what I'm eating. Right. I have focused on whole nutrition. Um, I've been committing and now it's actually, I feel off if I don't have one large salad with protein every day. Okay. So if I don't get it at lunch, then I get it at dinner. Okay. And then vice versa. In other words, you're not missing out on anything, right? No. And honestly, I love chocolate chip cookies. And yep. if I want a chocolate chip cookie, I have one. But you know what? I'm not going to lie. I had one the other day. Yeah. And I felt sick like <laughs> two hours later. I was like, man, I feel groggy. Your body, now. your body has adapted to a cleaner way of eating. Yeah. Just like your muscles adapt to the weights. Yeah. And just like the lifestyle changes. And, and you know, those people that drink, you know, the, a glass of wine or beer or whatever, did I tell you not to drink or no, eat or, no, or no, no. okay? Yeah. What we do is we came up with, okay, a couple things like chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. The last thing I want to do is put somebody in a, a state of, um, oh, I can't have this. Yeah. Okay. Cause then you're going to come to me. Like that's the guy that I couldn't have a glass of wine at night <laughs> after the kids were driving me crazy all day. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. I'd be out of business. Okay. So what we do is we develop, I call it diet development. Mm -hmm and go around the things that you can't do without. And we can still do that. And folks, during the holidays, you know, anywhere from eight to 12 pounds, you guys are gonna gain, or on, I should say, most people gain at eight to 10, 12 pounds. Now you can still have a good time during the holidays. There's just a couple uh, things that you have to watch out for. And I go around pretty well the things that you can get away with. I like to say get away with, and still not gain weight. Uh, gain fat weight and because then you, then when the first comes around of the year everybody's in a scramble to lose what they've they've gained or um, so we don't want that to happen but anyway so we're on track for your wedding yeah and um, so we still it's an ongoing process and then after that mainly it's just maintaining yeah you know after you go through that time time period where you feel comfortable enough in your body where your clothes start to fit better then it's maintenance then you start introducing things but what you're going to find out, like you experience, when you start bringing in those things that you like so much, they don't taste the same anymore. Right. You're kind of like out of your, your yeah. zone again. Yeah. So, and that's the, you know, because you created a different habit. And that's what it's all about. So, you know, we I like to get into your mind as well as, you know, and then all, all of a sudden you stop, you know, drinking as much or eating yeah. the wrong things. It just much. naturally kind of happens. Exactly. You know? yep. And so not only am I preparing for the wedding, but I also wanted to ensure because we'll start family planning next year as well. And right. So I wanted to make sure that I set myself up for a healthy pregnancy. I know a lot of women, I am a little older, and so a lot of women become naturally higher risk when they're over the age of 34 and right. pregnant. And so I didn't also want my weight to be another factor um, in why I would be considered a high risk pregnancy. And so that was also a very, that, that's a driving force of mine as to why I really want to make sure that I'm the healthiest version of me. Um, Obviously, the wedding and that's all kind of superficial stuff to some extent, right? right? Um, but it's truly having a healthy, healthy body that can sustain another life is really important as well. That's right. And also, women use the the uh, the birth of their child as an excuse to overeat 
and then after the delivery they keep the eating habit going and then you know another child comes along and then they try to lose the weight that they gained with the first child i had a lady come up to me and she says i gotta get rid of this baby fat i said well how old are your kids she said seven and ten Mm -hmm. I said, ah, I don't think that's baby fat anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, it doesn't matter uh, what yeah. got you here. It's uh, the common goal that we have. Yeah. And that is, I say common because I'm in it with you. Yeah. And, um, you know, we try not to restrict so many things that you, that you enjoy. The other thing is to eat food that actually activates your stomach enzymes to stimulate serotonin to your brain. That's why, you, that's why eat, changing your eating habits your serotonin is going to your brain to take the, tell the hypothalamus, tell the pituitary gland, hey, we're satisfied. And that's where that satisfied comes to. Most people keep eating. They say they're emotional eaters. Well, they're not getting that serotonin to their brain because the stuff that they're eating isn't real to begin with. They're genetic, genetically modified food. And unfortunately, it's all over the place. Yeah. I really so, love the new habits that I've created. That's honest. great. Yeah. yeah. And and it feels really good. And also, the people around you you know, say, what did you do? What, what's going yeah. on, right? And they, they start questioning you and they start, wow, she can do, you know, or, or yeah. you know, anything. Sure. And then you just kind of, you know, you become the, uh, the authority. So anyway. Okay, folks, we're going to wrap it up. Um, I'd like to also mention I have a two-for-one deal for those who want to take advantage of that. A spouse could be uh, uh, sister, brother, um, mother, daughter, uh, anybody in your family, cousin, neighbor, co-worker. You know, get them on down here. Come at the same time. And split the cost and uh, what a deal that is okay in a private facility nobody gawking at us nobody have to wait for anybody waiting for equipment and stuff like that sweaty equipment seeing people doing the wrong things wearing the wrong things especially wearing the wrong things um, so anyway so if you like this uh, video go ahead and like it and subscribe and uh, there will be many more of these coming down the road and we will do another update here in about a month or so and uh, we can chart our progress, and I think it's all going to be good now. Mm -hmm. Now that you've broken through that sugar barrier, yeah. you know, meaning that we cleaned up all the sugar. Mm -hmm. I mean, compared to your second month, mm -hmm. to your third, starting your third month, is like night and day. So now we got rid of the sugar in your blood. Now we're using fat for energy, which your body wants to do is use fat for energy. All right, folks, have a great Sunday. This is Over and Out from Ray Bissett, and we'll see you next time.